one. All right, welcome, guys. Okay, so listen, we're going to be talking about something simple. If you're a telemarketer, if you're a cold caller, you're going to need to know this. You see, you get into cold calling. Here's something which is, which is pretty interesting. You get into it, you start your new job. Almost anybody who starts out in sales starts out cold calling, starts out telemarketing because you need to get business. But here's the truth is there's a lot of people not telling you things as far as the legal side of cold calling. They're not even telling you. Like I used to work for a company that told me, call at 7 a.m. or 7.30 in the morning to actually go ahead and get some customers. Is that actually legal? Is that actually something you should be doing? That's something you're going to want to go ahead and stay tuned. And I'm going to show you how to avoid getting fined and how to pretty much avoid pretty much a cold calling mistakes. And I'm also going to be showing you resources as to how you can use AI for your cold calling. So stay tuned, guys, and we're going to go ahead and get this started. Welcome, all right, all right, guys. So, if it's your first time, do me a favor, hit the like on the button, go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well. So, a little announcements, guys. So, um, just go ahead right now, guys, go ahead and join the newsletter, the weekly newsletter. You can join the weekly newsletter, https learn with and I'm going to be releasing out news as far as like when we're working on a big deal and a partnership here that may or may not go through. But if it goes through, listen, you guys are going to want to pretty much be in on this because we're going to be revolutionizing the game as far as how sales works, how you can basically leverage artificial intelligence, leverage AI in your business, and basically how to leverage AI to go ahead and grow your business. And stay tuned, guys. I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to have an AI customer support, customer service that I'm going to chat with, have a conversation with, and how you can pretty much go ahead and implement the same thing and the same for your business. So first and first, let's go ahead and dive into it. So most people don't understand this. There's a few laws that goes in into when it comes to cold calling, and these are TCPA laws. This is Telephone Consumer Protection Act laws, which was implemented in the early 1970s to basically protect consumers from telemarketing, robocalls, and calls from basically unsolicited calls that people did not opt in for. Now, most people know this is cold calling is a very, 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 I'm going to say this again. It's a very, very, very lucrative way of growing your business. It's a very, very lucrative way of getting clients. It's a very, very lucrative way of getting people to sign up for it. Because I'm going to tell you this, it's cheap. All the cost you time it just all it does is pretty much cost you time it costs you nothing else it costs you nothing else more than your time all it does is it costs you just your time so basically it's the time cost so which means if you're low on budget you're low on expenses and cold calling is something that you want to do and i said this you're going to make a lot of money from it but let's go ahead and make sure that you're doing it the right way and you're actually doing it in a legal way so the first thing first we're going to cover here is this is a few rules that you got to pay attention to when you're cold calling and there's a reason why you got to pay attention to this so the telephone Con consumer protection act i actually misstated i said 1970s but it was in the 1990s it was formed in 1991 basically like like I said, it's just a for specific rules that you need to put in place. Now, the TCPA laws, whenever you're using a TCPA, you, or you, you have to abide by TCPA, then you need to understand that this is basically set for when you cold call them. If let's say somebody responded to my ad, I did an ad on Facebook, I did an ad on Google, I did an ad on YouTube or whatever ad it may be, and they agreed and opted and consented and they checked the box saying, I agree to be called, I agree to be texted by you, then that's something that's perfectly fine and you don't really necessarily have to worry about a few things I'm going to say here, but it's also very important to understand that when you are reaching out to them, you always have to give out, give people the option to opt out of whatever it is that you're doing. So I give you guys an interesting story here. So when I was selling insurance and I had a call center, we encountered someone who, a TCPA uh, litigator, which is basically, we had a TCPA thing that happened. And um, that was how I pretty much even understood how this law existed. It was something that was kind of fairly big. Now, the reality of it was, it was ended up just being the, the person that was basically saying that there was a violation was kind of, it, it was in a sense as today, we're just basically in a way of just chasing money, greedy, and, and, and there was a lot of things that goes into play. But one thing I learned from that is this, is whenever you're going to do something, make sure you do it the right way and make sure that you protect yourself because you never know who are the bad actors that are out there in business. You never know who's out there for your business. You got to make sure that you protect yourself. Okay. We got to make sure you protect your business. Don't rush into anything. Just make sure you have a few guidelines set in place. Okay. So the code calling rules here we have here. So one is the time of day. So I had a company, they were like, when I came in, they're like, this is the leads. Call them at 7.30 a.m. in the morning, 7 a.m. in the morning. Here's the reality. This is, that's good. Absolutely. You will get your, your pick up ratio is going to be high, but you're going to have a lot of angry consumers because people sometimes are still sleeping because you're calling them at 7.30, 7 a.m. in the morning. They're spending time with the kids. Why are you calling them at 7.30? We're like, well, because then I'm not going to be able to get a hold of them at 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. because you're ready to work. Well, guess what? That's just how it works. Okay. You might, you can call them afterwards. You can call them late at night at 5.30, 6 o'clock, but 
that doesn't mean that you should be calling them at 7, 7, 30 in the morning. So the consumer, the, 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 there's a few laws here. So be very, very pay, pay attention to it because this, this time zone, so you understand the time of day restrictions is pretty much applies basically in that consumer's time zone, not in your time zone. So let's say you're at Eastern time and you're cold calling somebody in Pacific time or you're cold calling someone who is in California or someone who is in Arizona or someone who's in Denver or someone who's somewhere in a different time zone and they might be, you know, your 8 a.m. might be your 5 a.m. Be very careful of that because you don't you want to be calling people in that respected time zone. So there's a few time of day restrictions. So no cold calls may be made before 8 a.m. or after 9 p.m. at the at the called party's location. OK, so no call should be made before 8 a.m. Uh, before 8 a.m. and after 9 p.m. At the location. So do not call this. So what is the do not call this? So the do not call this, you can find it and you can go to the DNC. So the, you can register for the DNC. So the, the do not call this is basically saying that your name and number is going to be put on the national do not call list. And the way to get this is you can go to www.donotcall.gov. It's a government registered website where people can register their phone number and basically not get telemarketed or unwanted phone calls. So this is something that you, you might want to pretty much take into place. This is what the do not call list. So you can also pay here to basically get access to data of numbers that are on the do not call list. Now, I highly recommend that you are scrubbing the DNC list on a basically a 31 day period. Now, if you're like, I don't know how to do the, I don't know how to go on a do not call list or actually go ahead and, you know, figure out you know the do not call list or or i don't i don't really know what to do when it comes to the do not call list or basically the do not call list is something that's like you know it seems a little bit overwhelming then i would recommend that you go ahead and check out there's a company called the blacklist alliance so the blacklist alliance is a very very i would say a very 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 useful resource and useful tool to basically avoid you know tcp violations tcp regulations and they can give you access where you can use various apis to go ahead and scrub the dnc list when someone opts in you can automatically set it up where you can go ahead and scrub the dnc list you can go ahead and check them out at blacklistalliance.com you can check them out at blacklistalliance.com i'm not getting paid any affiliate link this is people that we use for our company um so i'm not affiliated in any way shape or form just when you go there tell them emmanuel sent you and they'll be like cool hey we've worked in emmanuel before and um yeah, definitely go ahead and check out the blacklistalliance.com. So what does that do? That basically does is basically gives you access to a database of TCPA litigators who are basically, you know, legal people who basically go out there and basically sue, you know, cold callers to basically go ahead and get money. They pretend to be interested in your product so you can call them and then they say you validated some stuff. So that's TCPA litigators. You also have basically, you, you also have access to the database where you can filter out the DNC list. Um, you just need to register and get a few numbers and you can be able to set up a registry with D, D, and C. There's also a few videos on YouTube as well. You can go ahead and check out. It's going to help you basically give you resources and gives you tools as far as the DNC and how to filter out from the DNC list. So you're, you're, you're not getting pained from the DNC, okay? The, 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 the DNC list. So a few rules and guidelines, guys, as we said, is one, you got to make sure you filter in the DNC list. Okay, very important to do the time of day, the first one, the do not call list. And also you need to be identifying yourself. When you cold call someone, is it's very important that you understand that when you're cold calling someone, you need to say, you know what, my name is ABC and I'm calling with ABC company on behalf of that regarding this and a telephone number you can contact you need to dive out information which people know much about you you can reach out to us here okay you got to be pretty much be giving out this information here and also make sure that if you are running a sales organization make sure you are training your sales reps make sure you're training your people on how to pretty much cold call and various cold calling regulations that are out there it's very important that you're doing that right so a few more best practices and we're going to kind of dive into a more of a complete guide as far as the just to be basically more or less more compliant here so um it says here in the census so there's a few rules here that's kind of like now a little bit interesting here so it says do not deliver artificial voices or recordings to residences without prior written express written consent so here's the thing is this is if you're going to have your ai call this is why i highly recommend is now you're going to say hey man so does that mean i can't you know because it, it's saying here do not deliver artificial voice and you're going to show me how to use an ai to cold call does that mean that i cannot use ai to cold call my customers or cold call consumers to build business actually there's a loophole to this there's a loophole to this but i also recommend you do your research on it but as far as everything goes there is a loophole to this and I, that's why i recommend that you go ahead and do your research as well um
and there's a loophole to this, and I that's why I highly recommend that you go ahead and pretty much do your research as well. Okay, so you go ahead and do your research as far as um, pretty much everything, how everything goes, how to pretty much, you know, what's, what are the, you know, the guidelines to basically go ahead and set forward, right? So do not deliver artificial voices or recordings to residences without prior express written consent, which means you don't call houses with, like, you know how you get the robocalls, like, we are calling you to, because you have your extended warranty, you're calling regarding this, right? You don't want to do that. It says here, do not use auto dialers, recordings, or simulated voices to make calls to mobile phones or other residents where the receiver pays for the call itself. So this is very important. It's, you don't want to be calling people where they are getting billed for that phone call. You have to be the one as you cold calling, being the one that's responsible for the phone call. You have to be the one that's taking a financial hit for it. You don't want to be cold calling people where they are having to pay for that. That's very important to keep in mind. Okay. It's also prohibited to make calls using an automated dialing system to what? Any emergency. So you don't use any auto dialers. You don't use auto dialers to call emergency telephone line or any, any hospital. Do not call hospitals, emergency, medical physician or service offices with auto dialers, okay, your healthcare pursuit. Don't do that. Uh, or any law enforcement or agency. Don't use auto dialers for that. So the telephone line of any guest room or patient hospital, healthcare facilities, and to any phone line assigned to uh, someone for basically mobile radio service or radio communication carrier service. So basically all it's saying is this is, is if, if someone is in, a, is in the law enforcement agency, is in a hospital, don't use automatic dialers. Those have to be manual phone calls, which means you actually have to call them manually, no using of auto dialers, right? So it's also prohibited to initiate any telephone phone call to any residential line using an artificial voice or pre-recorded voice to deliver a message without the prior consent. Very, very important. So don't just... So what does this mean is if you have a, now this is where the gray line comes in is if with the conversational AI we're using is basically the conversational AI gives you ability to have an interaction, which means you're actually interacting with a robot, not dropping them a pre-recorded voicemail. So what does that mean? You can't just leave a pre-recorded voicemail to someone that did not express consent. Okay. But you can actually talk to them, right? It's prohibited to basically, um, so these are just a few laws to kind of keep in mind. So there's a few exemptions from that. I'm not going to dive into the exemptions here because, I mean, it's pretty much self-explanatory. So now this time zone consent is not required. So non-telemarketing calls that don't use a pre-recorded message. So if you're not trying to solicit and you're trying to call someone to talk to them, then that then consent is not required. And basically for any, basically if it's a non-commercial calls, then you do not require consent. And any pre-recorded or audited messages that are made for commercial purposes may be placed, but may not include or present unsolicited advertisements in any way uh, to basically solicit business, right? Now, demonstrating express content to be called for business. So it, it, this is where it kind of gets a little, and we're going to kind of dive uh, dive into this as well. So also understand this, this law of phone calls also applies to text messages. So be very careful. There's a lot of people that want to do mass blast. That's why I just say this is very, very careful when it comes to mass blasting, text message, mass blasting phone calls, because you're kind of leaving yourself open to kind of getting in trouble. So I don't recommend you guys do that. Uh, the legal cases uh, out there that consider. You, you even direct drop voicemail. So even drop voicemail, they can also consider that as a call source. So be very, very careful of that. Now, as we kind of dive into this, so understanding the TCPA regulations and related law. So I'm not going to dive into that. Uh, so when you contact customers, obviously, as you guys know, 8 and 9 p.m., don't do that. Uh, solicitation calls may not use artificial voice recording, so don't solicit. You know, if someone filled in an ad and they're like, hey, I want to respond, you know, they consent into that. You can call them with an AI. Uh, automated Dialers may not be used for emergencies, so which means you can use auto dialers. Just don't use auto dialers for to call emergency phone numbers, anything, you know, physician's offices, healthcare, cell phone, or any of that calls. Those are calls on which you have to be doing that manually. So unfortunately, if you call in doctor's offices, kind of you want to be doing that manually um, as opposed to, you know, go calling them. Text messages, so staying compliant as well. So when you send TCPA text messages, you kind of want to include basically report stop to. Uh, to opt out, right? Do not place marketing call or text without prior express written consent. So any form of agreement, even if they agreed online, they check the box that they are actually agreeing for you to be contacting them. That's something that you have to also pretty much pay attention to. Uh, stay up to date on best practices. Um, and also, like I said, please, please, please definitely be checking the DNC list so that you're not putting yourself in trouble. Okay. Now, TCPA and cell phones are, uh, TCP and cell phones or smartphones. Do not send text messages, obviously, as you guys know that. Uh, there's fines, it could be that. Do not send pre-recorded messages to sell smartphones without any written consent, so which means if it's not someone that's opted into an ad, be very careful of doing that, especially if you're in a B to C world, okay? If you're in a B to C world, be very, very careful of that, okay? Um, so another few things is in as well, which is like a few things to kind of keep in mind as to um, 
make sure you're scrubbing your phone numbers, guys. Make sure you're scrubbing your phone numbers. And that's why I recommend you guys go ahead and check out the Blacklist Alliance. I recommend, right, guys, you guys go ahead and check out the Blacklist Alliance. Because when you check out the Blacklist Alliance right here, they can give you, they will give you access to a database that you can scrub against to basically go ahead and make sure that you're preventing yourself from, you know, any anything um, at all. So. Make sure you're scrubbing your phone numbers. Set up automatic rules to prevent limit calls by time zone. So, which means make sure that you're not ex you're not exceeding a time zone. Um, and also another thing as well, whenever you're doing phone calls, tell them, hey, this call is going to be recorded for quality and training purposes. Make sure that you're recording calls. Get basically giving them, asking them for verbal consent to proceed, right? Because if someone says, oh, you did this, you did that. Listen, I have a call recording of you saying this. So make sure you have written calls. The stronger consent is basically private consent and also you want to have pretty much a recorded voice consent as well call recording can keep clients happy recording and smart transcription so keep a written consent and keep those consent and also don't forget make sure that you include in disclosures including your name pop-ups of you know anything at all saying that this is a company we're calling from and this is where you can find us so best practices guys don't call before 8 a.m or 9 p.m uh don't robocall do not do robocalls robocalls are pretty much like you know voice mode drops don't do that uh, exclude residential numbers from the DNC. Uh, exclude residential numbers on your in-house do not call list. Um, and then basically exclude cell phones from automated calls or text messages unless the called party has already given personal consent. Include a mandatory disclosure for your agents. So tell your agents who will call in to disclose the name of the caller, the company for which you're calling, and uh, the address that should be reached. Do not make telemarketing calls using an automated dialing system without prior express written consent. Okay, so. Set up call, uh, calling equipment to disconnect within 50 seconds or four rings of an unanswered telemarketing call. So if somebody hasn't connected in 15 seconds or four rings, disconnect, call them again. If they don't, disconnect, call them again if they don't. For pre-recorded or um, artificial voice messages, at the start of your message, state the name of your business, the place you're calling from, leave a phone number that your business can be reached, and pretty much give an ability to opt out. Very important. Give them an ability to opt out because most people I receive telemarketing calls on a daily basis. People calling me and I'm like, dude, you guys, you're just like, do you want sixty thousand dollars deposit in your bank account? Call us now and we can give you debt relief. I'm like, who am I calling? What's with the company? There's nothing. It's just like call this number eight five five four four two t t t t t. And I'm like, dude, it's not you guys are what? What are you doing? Right. So you got to be careful about those blasts like that. Be very, very careful. Calls are exceptions for TSA. So manually dial calls, calls made for emergency purposes, and calls not for commercial use. So this is basically for if you're in a position in which you are basically doing a B to C, okay? B to C. Now, if you're doing B to B, B to B is fine because B to B, if I'm cold calling a business, you got to understand, they are a registered business, which means they actually have registered your business and they have actually agreed to, agreed to be called as long as it's not an emergency service business. They've pretty much agreed to be called, so you can call the business because you're calling a business. That's why cold calling usually works for the B2B purposes. Like I said, always go ahead and fact check and go ahead and double check. You can cold call B2B purposes, but when it comes to B2C, just be very, very cautious. Just be very, very careful, but on a B2B basis, that's something you can go ahead and try. That's something you can go ahead and check out. Now, remember, guys, I told you guys I'm going to be showing you and kind of like showing you guys how you can pretty much have an AI that will basically be taking your inbound calls. And it can also do the same thing as well for your outbound calls as well and handle all of that for you. So what we're going to be doing right now, guys, I'm going to be sharing my screen. I want you guys to so I'm going to share my screen because I want you guys to actually see what I am doing here. I want you guys to pretty much see what I'm doing here. I'm going to share my screen so you can go ahead and test this out, guys. And if you want, guys, want to test it out and see how the AI works, you can test it out. And if you guys are ready to sign up, just go to chat.air.ai or air.ai. You can go ahead and sign up. Now, this, I'll just give you guys a heads up. When you sign in your account, it's going to be really slow if you sign up with the air.ai link because the days are not overwhelm. Basically, there's a lot of people that are using the service. But but uh, we're working out with something here where we can basically get a faster setup. Now, I, like I said, guys, email me here at emmanuel at rizmresults.com. Or text text I'm in here to 754-262-4523 or email me at Emmanuel and results.com that hey Emmanuel, I'm ready to start. I want to go ahead and get started for this. Um to basically you know get started. But I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna call in a number and this is going to be like an inbound customer service number, and you guys can go ahead and see how it works, okay. Hello? Hi. Hey. Yes. Hey. Ruth from Risen AI. How's your day going so far? 
My day is going great. Yourself? That's awesome to hear. My day is going pretty well, too. Thanks for asking. Awesome. So I'm calling to see if there's anything you guys can help me with as far as the AI services. Absolutely. That's what we're here for. Well, let's dive right in. I'm just going to ask you a few questions to see if we're a good fit for you and you can be the judge at the end of the call. Sound good? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Yeah. What are the questions you're going to ask me? No worries. Let's get started. So I'm curious, what specifically caught your interest in Emmanuel's video or our So I was watching um, Emmanuel's YouTube video, and I was like, it's so cool, and I decided to call to check in. That's awesome. It's always great to hear when our videos resonate with people. Now, let's say everything went perfectly, and you were using Ryzen to scale your business. How many dives would you want each month? And what kind of results are you expecting, let's say, within 30 days? Um, I would expect about $4,000 on a daily basis. Um, and I'm also expecting to get about 400 appointments from that. That's a solid goal. Making around $4,000 daily and getting 400 appointments within 30 days would definitely be a game changer. Now, I'm curious, what gets you excited about hitting those numbers? What's the driving force behind it? Uh, the driving force behind it is obviously, as you guys know, who doesn't want to make more money? Obviously. Absolutely. Making more money is definitely a motivating factor for many people. So on a scale of 1 to 10, how much would you say you'd feel that excitement and motivation if you were able to hit those numbers? Oh, it'd be at, at 11. Wow. That's a high level of excitement. An 8 at 11. That's awesome. Now, on the flip side, on the same scale of 1 to 10, how much do you feel like you currently have that excitement or motivation? Two and a half. Got it. So currently you're feeling at about a two and a half. That's understandable. Now, why do you think you have that lower level of excitement or motivation at the moment? Uh, because, you know, I can always make more money. I totally get that. The desire to make more money is always there, but sometimes it's just a matter of finding the right strategies or tools to make it happen. Well, based on our conversation, I have two resources that I think would really help you out. Would you like me to send those to you? Yeah, sure. What are the resources? Awesome. The first resource is a one-on-one -on -one call with Emmanuel himself. She can show you how we can set up our AI services to help you reach your goals. The second resource is our paid course where you can learn how to set it up yourself. So to get this set up for you, may I know the city you're in so I can check your time zone? I am currently in Denver, Colorado. Great. Thanks for letting me know. Let me check the available time slot in your time zone. So now we're... Okay, it looks like we have a slot available on September 2nd, 223 at 2.30 p.m. and another one on September 4th, 223 at 1.30 p.m. Which one works best for you? 1.30 p.m. Perfect. I'll lock in the September 4th, 223 at 1.30 p.m. slot for you. Also, I'll let Emmanuel know that you're interested in learning more. Just to confirm, there's no reason you wouldn't be able to make the call, right? You can 100% make it. Um, no, actually, I have to drop my kids off uh, in the pool. <laughs> I won't be available at the time. I'm dropping my kids off in school. I, I totally understand. Family commitments are important. Let me check for another available time slot that works for you. Okay, how about September 5th, 2023 at 2.30 p.m.? Would that work for you? Yeah, that works for me. And what's uh, what's uh, the name of your company? Great. 
I'll lock in September 5th, 23 at 2.30 p.m. for our call. The name of our company is Risen AI. We specialize in AI services to help businesses scale and achieve their goals. I'm really excited to hear how your call goes and most importantly to see you get results. So everything is good to go over here. I hope you have an awesome rest of your day. Thank you. And what's your name again? You're welcome. My name is Ruth. It was a pleasure speaking with you, and I look forward to our call on September 5th. Have a fantastic day. All right. Thank you, Ruth. Bye. All right. So as you guys know, there's a little bit of tweaks. I'm still learning, working on training the AI. As you guys know, it's pretty much all everything is powered by Air AI. AI is pretty much the one providing the service now. As you guys know, I'm kind of still, you know, figuring out the kinks of it. So once I do, you know, let you guys know. But text I'm in to seven five four two six two four five two three so we can know we can lock you in because once we guys we roll this up, I'm only going to be accepting 100 150 customers to until we can go ahead and perfect the system. So go ahead and text I'm in to seven five four two six two four five two three. Like I said, guys, we're only limiting this to about a hundred customers, hundred and pay hundred paid customers to go ahead and build a case study. If you want to be part of our case study in the beta product, please go ahead and text in text I'm in to seven five four two six two four five two three. And it's a pleasure to have everybody on board. And if you guys want you can go ahead and call the number um you can call that number the number was shown on screen as well uh, it's not going to be the 754 number if you want to go ahead and check the number you can go ahead let me see if i can find this number here you can go ahead and let me get the number to call you can go ahead and call this number to demo the ai if you like i said give it some tweaks i'm still working on the tweaks i know a few things that i want to kind of perfect on it but if you're watching this video right now you can call so you can demo the ai all right, and demo the AI by calling uh, plus one. But so basically, it is you can call basically. Let's fix this right now. So you can call. Hey, it's fine. You just do this. You can call 762 238 3727 to demo the AI. And also, guys, you guys have a great one. And thanks everyone for watching on board. So take care and have a good day.